Hi guys. Today I am going to show you how I take elements from Creative Fabrica and kind of make my own design for a wrap. Um, I know I always link to ones that I downloaded, but I like to take a digital paper and a bleach spot and another image or just a digital paper and an image and put them together to make a background. I don't have any fancy editing software or any of that. You can do this very, very basic. So I'm in Creative Fabrica. I do have a monthly subscription and I utilize it quite a lot. Um, they do have a annual subscription now, which is a tremendous savings. So I'm going to upgrade mine to that. Um, I will put links to memberships down below in the description box. If you haven't checked it out, check it out. It can be tough to navigate because there is so, so much available. Um, as you can see, five and a half million graphics and a hundred thousand fonts and so much other stuff. So, um, but I'm going to jump right in. I'm going to do a Halloween tumbler, a kind of sweet, not so spooky, spooky season tumbler. So what I'm going to want first is my background selected. So I want a Halloween seamless pattern digital paper. I already kind of scoped out what I wanted so we could hopefully make this a little bit quicker. So I'm going to scroll through and see if I can find what I'm looking for. Okay, so this is the one I want, I believe. I'm going to click on it and find out. This pattern comes in a hundred different colors. I do not believe that the color palette is necessarily accurate but they have this design scape arts has a million different patterns available if you need a chevron or a harlequin or a herringbone or bubbles if you go through and look you can probably find it i think they have 800 different backgrounds in 100 different colors each so if you just need something that's repetitive, you can probably find it here. So I'm gonna go ahead and download this. And I'm going to, I'm just gonna open another window with Creative Fabrica for now. And I'm gonna come in and I'm going to pick my main image, which is going to be, um, Retro Spooky Season Ghost is what I'm looking for. And there's quite a lot of them. I had picked one in particular that I thought was cute. If I can find it again. I like so many of these. Spooky season ghost. I don't know why I'm not finding it. Or did I just miss it? Go back up and tack on the word Halloween. This one right here is the one I wanted that I thought was cute. So I'm going to go ahead and download that also. 
and the third element I want is going to be a bleach spot to put some separation between the um, the background and the design. So I'm going to type in bleach spot element. All right, so I don't need spot or element. Just bleach spot will do. And I'm gonna want a circle one. I feel like I already have this one. I'm gonna go with this one. This may be the one I already have, I'm not sure. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up my files. Now I think I'm actually going to open this first because I'm going to want to be able to see this next to my color samples. I think the color I want is number 86, I think. So I'm going to open that one up first. Mm, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, that's a pretty close match to this color in my image. And they have another batch of these. I don't know that this is particularly the one I want. So I'm going to go back over here. And I'm going to look at Design Scape Arts Halloween Digital Paper because they do have multiples. Like this one has skulls. That's one I just downloaded. All right, so I think I like this one better. So I'm gonna go ahead and download this one. And while that downloads, I'm going to go ahead and open up my bleach spot. And I'm going to go ahead and save that as in pictures. Save the bleach effect. And close that out. I'm going to open this up. And I think their colors stay the same file to file. So 86. All right, let's double check that against this. Yeah, I like that. I like this pattern better. It's got more of the elements of this kind of. So I'm going to go ahead and save this file because this can be saved as is. I'm going to call this Spooky Season Web. Alright. So now we have to work within this image. I'm just closing some of this background stuff out of the way. Alright, so what happens is this is a perfect square. I don't want a perfect square. So what you have to know is 96 pixels is one inch of image. For a tumbler wrap, you need a height of 8.2 by 9.3 for your width, roughly. So, 
the 96 times 8.2 and 9.3 is what you're looking for. What I have is a cheat sheet that has those two dimensions, one times, two times, three times, and four times, because sometimes your image is going to be 3,600 pixels, and sometimes it's going to be 15 by 15, or whatever the case may be. So I'm going to go ahead and edit this image, and this one is 15 by 15. So I can only do the smallest size, which would be a height of 787.2. So I'm going to drag this up till I get close. It doesn't have to be perfect. 788 is close enough. And then for the width, it would be 892.8. And there are cheat charts that you can find. If you Google pixels to inches, it'll tell you exactly what you're looking for. So 892. This is not an exact science. So 894 by 788 is close enough. Now you're saying, but you lost the rest of your screen. No, I didn't. What I can do is come up here and reduce this and it'll shrink my image back into that box. So I'm gonna get as close as I can without going off the edge. And that is what I'm going to save. So I'm gonna call this my Peach Halloween that BG for background. Okay. So that is that. Now I'm going to layer this all together over here in my Open Office program. I'm going to open it up. I'm going to open a text document. This is a free program. I use this because it's free and accessible to everybody. So I'm going to go into a page down here. I'm going to change the orientation to landscape. I'm going to change all of the margin values to zero. I do this all the time. So up here where it says last custom values, mine's always zero. It makes it easier than typing them all in. I'm going to come up back up to the top menu, go on insert, come down to picture, from file. I'm going to introduce my background. Now this will resize it to the 8.5. It'll make it as big as can fit on the screen. So down at the bottom where the size is, I'm going to go ahead and double tap on that and open it up. I'm going to click keep ratio. That's important. And I'm going to bring this back down to 9.3. It's still going to be a little bit bigger the other direction because I didn't get my measurements perfect. I don't care. I can trim a little bit off the bottom, and I will anyways because no two tumblers are ever exactly the same. I may even keep this like 9.33. So that is resized. I'm gonna click off of this. If you don't click off of the bounding box and get the green dots gone, it will replace this image with the next image, which if you are just going through and printing a bunch and opening them and closing them without actually making files is great. That's absolutely fine. But because I'm layering images, I need to click out of that. I'm going to go ahead and insert picture again. This is where I'm going to bring my bleach effect in. And I will resize this, but I'm not going to do that yet. I'm going to get my main image on top first. So picture from file one more time. Put your spooky season in. And obviously I don't want it that big. I'm going to bring this down to about four and a half by four and a half. 
and I'm going to bring it back somewhat centered. It'll automatically open it up centered side to side. So you just want to get your top to bottom wherever you want it. So now I can come in with my bleach spot and manipulate the size on that. And I think I'm going to bring that down to six and a half to start and see what that gets me. So I'm going to manually manipulate this at this point. Not necessarily keep it perfect. This one up just a tiny bit and I'm pretty happy with that so I'm going to go ahead and make sure I'm not selected on anything you can see the boxes where the layered images are those won't be there when you get to print so I'm going to save this as spooky season Standard. And I'm calling it standard because this is non mirrored. Because if I wanted to print this as sub, I'm going to come back in and I'm going to select my images one by one and flip them all horizontally. And I'm going to do every layer just to make sure it stays exactly the same. So now everything is mirrored to print for sublimation or a reversed water slide. So I'm going to go ahead and save it again. Save as Spooky Season Mirrored or just mirror. That way it is ready to go either direction. So that is it. That is how I can maintain a little more creative control even though I don't have drawing and design skills. So I will probably go ahead and print one of these in sub and maybe one of them standard. And we will make an epoxy tumbler and a sublimation tumbler of this image. So that is it. Hopefully you understood the whole process here. I know the pixels and the resizing can be confusing, but if you bring a square image in, you're not going to be able to resize it to a rectangle without distorting it once you get it into another program. You have to trim it down. Sometimes I don't bother with the pixels. I just make a rectangle and guess and then just trim off all of the excess when I'm done. That's actually a little quicker and easier, but not as neat and as close to properly sized. So that is it. And I will see you in the next video where we turn these into cups.